pick in the NBA draft, the Denver Nuggets select. Draft nights, Nuggets Europe, uh, fantastic after after at least a few weeks, lads. Uh, fantastic to have the gang back together for a bit of Nuggets talk. I think we've all had a very, uh, I want to say, deserving vacation. We we're joined by uh, Ben, <laughs> Brad, uh, two lads over in England, and Andrea from Italia. Gentlemen, welcome in. Draft night is upon us. I say you're all buzzing. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah. Excellent. The oh, Nuggets, lads, wait. obviously. We've got stuff to talk about. We have a lot to talk about. The last time we talked, man, like it was all over and it was like, oh, I mean, it was just, I think it took us like five days to actually record a show after that game. It, it was did, just like, yeah. oh, the disappointment. It was like, right, let's do it. Um, if we did one, I can't even remember now, but we're back. That's the main <laughs> thing. The Nuggets are drafting lads at 22 as of yep. the recording of this show, which is not live. However, we appreciate you interacting. We can't make it look this good normally, so... Thank you very much for interacting. If you have just joined us, folks, this is presented by uh, NBA 2K21. It's out on the PS5 this Thursday, as far as I know. So get a PS5 and buy it and play it. We look forward. We're going to do a competition next month. We're all going to play it somehow. And uh, I can't wait to beat everybody here. Lads, I want to go around <laughs> to sort of get like a round table discussion, right? Now, this is a really interesting draft class in the sense that COVID has completely messed up the whole year, but I guess for the majority of teams, they still have a good idea of who they want. The Bucks have just went mad over the last 24 to 48 hours. Um, starting with yourself, Ben, you know, what what are your thoughts ahead of this draft? We, you know, we, we will get to, you know, who do we want the most for the Nuggets, but what's your thoughts ahead of this draft? Um, yeah, they went nuts, didn't they? Uh, I think... It's not a stacked draft class, and obviously people aren't going to know a lot as much as they they generally would do about the prospects. Um, I think we've just got to be smart, and I'm I mean, I'm just interested to see whether or not we trade for a name before I could, we can start thinking about who's going to be the best fit. We don't know who, what our starting lineup is going to be right now, so until we can see what that's going to look like, what our depth is going to look like with the players that we've already got, who, who we're going to bring back in, uh, who we're going to go out and get in free agency, if we're going to get anyone in free agency. Um, mm. Things like if we re-sign Jeremy Grant, how much money we re-sign Jeremy Grant for, so on and so forth. So there's so many factors that are up in the air right now. Uh, so it's really hard to kind of pinpoint. I mean, I, I've got a few prospects that I've been doing some research on and having a look into that I think would be really good fits now. But um, let's see what happens on draft night, I suppose, and, and kind of go from there. I think that's the best way to look at it. Of course. And the draft kicks off 11 o'clock tonight in Sky Sports. It's also at midnight in Sky Sports in Italia. Before we speak to Andrea, uh, Brad, welcome in, man. It's yeah. been a while. It's been, it's been a minute, man. Seriously. It's been very long. Been a minute. Yeah, I've been, everything's been hectic. And, uh, but Nuggets is always on the back of my mind. So we're, we're always here. Um, yeah, I think Ben goes to. Nice summary there. I mean, the Bucks have gone gone wild. I mean, I like the Bogdanovich pickup. I think that's that's very nice for them. To be yeah. with Drew, I think personally, I think they've overpaid a little bit, but uh, you know they had to do something to keep Janice because he was off. Otherwise, I mean, next year he'd definitely be off. But, um, mm. And that's the other thing. Maybe Drew will be as well because he's only got he's got a player option right at the end of in the next season so that's gonna that could be a really expensive rental if he drops out straight afterwards um, yeah i mean yeah that's been said i think i think the big thing that we're going to be working on now is going to be trying to resign jeremy grant i think i think that's going to be the key um i was looking at that i think we had 25.7 million dollars in cap space without jeremy grant being signed so he's probably going to eat into a big chunk of that so i don't don't think we're going to see Millsap back i think i think the suns is it off yeah. Phoenix? I think the Suns are hunting around him already. So, um, but yeah, tonight will be interesting for sure. Definitely the end of an era. Well, how Paul Millsap, anyway, lads, in that sense. Mm. Uh, Andrea, ch ciao, man, ciao. Uh, 
welcome in. It's good to have you on again. It's been, it's been a minute as well. Now, one thing, folks, Andrea has said he's he's big. You're, you're big into this draft. You're you're really you know you've looked at some of the the players and stuff. Yeah. Are you excited? You know, obviously taking maybe your Nuggets hat off. Are you excited for the draft tonight? Are you excited to see where some of these players fall? Yeah, of course, because I am a huge college basketball fan. So I watch college basketball. I love to uh, see these guys playing. So every year on um, draft night is one of my favorite nights of the year. So yeah, this year Nuggets have the 22nd pick. So we can see what we can do. And yeah, I think 2020 draft is one of the, of the most unpredictable draft ever because we don't have like uh, some superstars, you know, okay, you're sure they're going in the top picks. I think there will be a lot of good role players. So we'll see. Absolutely. And we're going to look at some players in a second, lads, in regards to tonight's draft. There is one piece of news, which I'm sure, lads, by the time the show goes out, will change. But apparently, as of the time of this recording, the Kings and the Nuggets have had preliminary trade talks on a deal that would send Bully Hill to Denver. Hill? Hill? Um, I mean, Ben, would you be excited with that? Obviously, I, I think oh, yeah. the Nuggets. Yeah, I think he's a perfect fit. I think... Um, I'd love to break some Philadelphia hearts because obviously they're really keen on him. Um, I'd love to break some Dallas hearts because they're obviously really keen on him as well. So if we can get a deal over the line, which uh, brings in Buddy Heald, I think uh, it will be a perfect fit for us. I mean, he's a, a dead eye shooter, one of the best shooters in the in the NBA. There's a reason why he was uh, chosen to represent Sacramento in the three point shootout uh, at All Star Weekend. He is a fantastic shooter. Um, which draws attention. You have to guard him. You you know you have to be defenders have to be mindful of him. He will spread the floor, uh, create more space on the inside for our inside players. He's uh, he's a fantastic player, and I, I rate him really highly. He took a huge leap uh, from his rookie season in his sophomore season. Um, you know, there's obviously some question marks around his kind of attitude off the court. Some of the stories that you've heard about him. Um, and how he conducts himself, but uh, you know, I mean, that that comes with with age, doesn't it? So, you know, there's a lot of players that are young players that that go through things that uh, have to learn about the lifestyle. So, I think it'll be a fantastic pickup for us. And there's there's also a lot of rumors going around that he was almost leading towards the Dallas Mavericks at one point. I think that was at the weekend as well. But I think I think guys and Brad especially, man, if if Philly wants him and they want James Harden as well. Surely, uh, Buddy would be a good signing. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm not sure. Can I, oh, I don't know about the Harding one. I think he's pretty set in stone at Brooklyn, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's, I think that's set in stone. I don't think he's going to go to Philly. But yeah, no, Buddy Hill would be a great, definitely a great pickup. I think one of the things that Ben said that I think might ring some alarm bells is, is definitely the persona because that's one thing that they draft well and they always look at are people who fit well in the gym, in the dressing room and that. That might be his only sort of skew if that could make it go a bit sour. But as a player, for sure, I mean, it's a, that's a great pickup. I, I would be interested to see who gets traded in that. But yeah, I'd be definitely interested to see. Yeah, right enough. Hopefully, it's not any of our favourites. Uh, like, for example, Ball Ball. I think he's staying though. As of recording, hopefully, not happens, lads, in the next 24 hours. Yeah. Andrea, um, buddy, see? Yes. It would be good, wouldn't it? Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> By the way, uh, as we're here to talk about the draft, I remember in the uh, uh, 2016 draft, uh, I was in love with Buddy Hill. I <laughs> I really hope the Nuggets will pick him, and then we pick Jamal Murray. So it went well, but <laughs> 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 but I was really in love with Buddy Hill. I think he's a great player, and I think he will fit very well in this Nuggets. We have to see the price, you know. Because yeah. he, I think, in next year, this season, he will enter in this big contract. I think it's like 100 million, four years, something like that. So it's, yeah, we, we have to see what we can give them back for body. And obviously, the one thing that we have seen over the course of us not really being on in the English broadcast anyway is that MPJ is not remotely available for a trade so it looks no like see Brad Good. nodding there already he looks very happy but yeah my so train, please my train's still in. 
your train for him, your, your train for him might be in, but the train for Drew Locke, I think, is starting to leave the station, Brad. So we we we'll yeah. we, 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 we come back to that in a different show in Denver. But uh, yeah, Matt, sure, we we're very lucky to have a special guest on in a few minutes who has been in the position where he's sitting in draft night and he's been drafted by the Denver Nuggets, albeit in the same draft as Yao Ming. We'll talk about that in a second. But before we do, I've got two sort of key questions for all you guys, and I guess myself at the end. Starting with you, Ben. You know, who do you want the most in this draft for the Nuggets? Also, do we trade up? Yes or no? Uh, oh, I, I don't think we do trade up. Um, I don't see a reason why we would now that Drew Holiday is a, a factor. Um, and obviously he has, he's been traded already. So um, I think the reason is a trade were to facilitate a trade uh, for him. Uh, so no, we don't. I don't think we draft up. Who do I want realistically? Um, I mean, based on the chat we had before and based on some of the research I've done, who I think would be a great fit, um, you know, there's players like Josh Green, uh, who I think would be a really good fit. Big, strong, um, two guard who can shoot the ball really well. He's defensively sound. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's such a hard question because who knows what's going to happen with the other pieces. So, you know, if, if we're talking about a guard, I'd love to see Josh Green. Um, then obviously Jalen Smith as well, who's someone else that we've talked about, who I think would fit in really well into that dunker spot, would really relish uh, sharing minutes on the court with Jokic. Um, so yeah, I think they're the two that really stand out to me. Uh, whether or not they, they fall to us uh, is another question, or whether or not our situation changes is obviously something that we, we should monitor. Brad, what do you think, man? Is there anybody else that maybe sticks out for you? Yeah, well, I'll go with the first one. I, I agree. I, we're not going to trade up now. I think that was purely a rumor on the back of trying to get Drew Holiday. And now that's gone. That's, that ain't going to happen. I think we're staying pat as is. All those stranger things have happened, and we'll see because you know these things. Where these things always work. Um, when I was looking through the list, um, I, the name that stood out for me was Devin Vassell. I think he he was a good fit for us. And I think he'd be a solid player, shoots well, got a big span for a point guard. Um, I think it could work out well. Um, I, I like the Jalen Smith, and I've seen that in a couple of mocks. I think that would be fantastic. But I, I just, the way it's looking, I, I'm just not sure if he's going to drop down to 22, and mm. we're not going to move. I, I think he's going to be out of the picture. Um, so, yeah, but Devin Vassell is the one I really like. He's the one I'd like, but I don't think he's going to drop either. I think 22 is going to be quite a tough, it's quite a tough number in a not very deep class. So, um who was the, uh, the other person I saw was Theo Maldion, the French power forward, who I thought might be quite cool as well. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll see tonight, really. Wait and see. It would definitely be class to have another European in, or an Australian yeah. in Josh Green's sense. I mean, a French guy would be fantastic. Yeah. Andrea, have you got somebody else in mind as well, or are you sort of uh, like sort of lodging towards what, what, what these lads are saying? Yeah, yeah, these names are the best um, realistic names for the Nuggets. Josh Green, I think, is the best fit that we can have at the 22. Uh, the unrealistic pick is, for me, is the best player in this draft for the Nuggets. Is the perfect 3 and D and is Devin Bassel. But I think he will go in the top 10. So it's not, it's not Nuggets material in this draft. And yeah, there are a lot of, a lot of players that Nuggets could pick. Josh Green, I think, is the best fit, but it's also Desmond Bain or Tyler Bay, which is uh, played in Colorado, Colorado University this year. So we'll see. Hometown here already. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I Philip like, Lindsay. <laughs> another one, eh? I um, uh, I'll, I'll, look, I'll be the first boy to admit. Even with like something like the NFL draft, I was sit down for a month beforehand because there's seven rounds. There's that many players. With the NBA, it is more difficult to actually, you know, fit. Like, obviously, you can fit certain players into your team and, and into maybe a mantra that you have, but it is more difficult. It's more difficult to predict what's going to happen, and I think that's very good, especially when you go down the board. And you guys obviously mentioned there, um, Jalen Smith. Like Brad, I, you're talking there about maybe him not falling down to 22. There have been a number of draft mocks that take him down as far mm -hmm. as. 21 19 going to miami mm. at 20 going to brooklyn at 19 who knows so yeah. who knows what's going to happen tonight obviously if the nuggets trade up even the 16 17 they might get their man 
but you, you guys are all going to stay up late and watch it, yeah? That's oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, was, yeah. it was kind of like the MPJ pick. I, I mean, I never in the world saw him ever fall into where we were. Never. And, and it happened. So these things happen on a night. You know, you just really don't know what could happen. When, when talking about the NBA draft, there's one rule that every mock draft is incorrect. It's going to be... <laughs> you can say whatever you want. You'll never, you'll never guess the pick. Mm -hmm. Never. That's no, rule number one. Yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be one of those things, and it's at the ESPN headquarters, so it's not going to be like the other years. Like, you know, obviously, like, going back to the, I don't want to go back to the NFL too much, but they had a draft, which was very remote in that sense. It was all right. It got very boring after a day or so, but that's what the end, that's what the NBA have going for them. It's one, it's one night, really. It's, it's not too bad in that sense. I'm looking forward to it, guys, and I think the Nuggets could definitely pop a surprise. Has anybody got any last comments they want to do before we, before we bring in our special guests? Or any last predictions? or? Um, I I think we're going to make a try. Uh, not make a trade. Yeah, I think we're going to bring in. <laughs> we're going to bring in a name. I think we're going to bring in a name. Uh, it's something that, like you know, I love the Nuggets mantra of we don't skip steps. But I think mm. now having a taste of the Western Conference Finals and really, you know, having that opportunity to say every year we've climbed the mountain just a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. I think now is the time we say, okay, now it's time to really try and put something in motion here that will send us over to that next level um, where we can genuinely compete for a championship. I think a player like Buddy Heald will really give us an edge. I don't think he's the only piece we need, um, especially if we've got guys who are going to be going out. But I think he's a really good step in the right direction. So I think it's going to happen. I think something big is going to happen. Yeah. Something, I think something has to happen, though, Ben, because obviously, especially with Portland getting Covington, I mean, you know, that's making yeah. them a lot dangerous again as well, isn't it? I mean, wow. That that West is, <laughs> is going to be tough. <laughs> uh, it's going to be tough. Even if even if Harden leaves, it's still it's still going to be such a tough conference. Yes. Mm. I mean, I really Andrea, thought, have you I any really final thought, words for us, man? Yeah, I really thought uh, we were going to get Covington. I really thought we we had chance to get him. Mm. Uh, yeah, he's going to Portland, so mm. it's tough. It's tough this year <laughs> in the Northwest. Really, really tough in the West. Yeah. Conference. It's definitely, but there was yeah, there was rumours yeah. that um, that Jeremy Grant was going to potentially be signing in Portland and you know mm. things like that. And I think that no trade, no that way. trade, uh, that that signing, That's gone, huh? kind of cements the fact that he's not going to do yeah. that. So, um, yeah. so yeah, yeah, that was a, a scary. I wasn't outbreak. even considered in that. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't I'm, even considering I mean, Jeremy Grant I'm, signing I'm, in any, anywhere. I think, he, yeah, I, I think he, he grew up there, I believe. Um, so that was obviously the connection that people were making. And when you hear something like that, you think to yourself, oh, you know, if there's some sort of personal connection as well. But, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, that, that kind of puts a nail but on the car, But grew up as a Nuggets fan, and look where that, that didn't get us anywhere either, did it? So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So no one cares about that kind of thing in, in NBA history, yeah. do they? The, um, obviously, the next step in the Nuggets' journey towards getting to at least the finals this season is tonight. You can watch the NF the the NBA draft. Wow. <laughs> Somebody isn't well. I can sign up. You can watch yeah. the NBA draft at midnight in, or sorry, eleven o'clock on Sky Sports in the UK and Ireland. Midnight in Europe. It's on Sky Sports in Italy. And then um, it's on a number of different channels on BN Sports in France as well. Um, guys, all, I want to thank you for joining me. Like we're so close now to the start of the season, so I'm interested to see where we can go from here. Watch this space. Uh, it's hard to believe the season's like four weeks away, lads, isn't it? It's nuts. Mm. Crazy where the season's gone. I can't believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, ben, Brad, Andrea, guys, thanks very much. And here is a guest that was drafted fifth in the NBA draft in 2002. Here's his opinion. With the 22nd pick in the NBA draft, the Denver Nuggets select... Draft night, folks. Welcome in Nuggets Europe. Special guest, a guy that has previously been drafted by the Nuggets, so I can't wait to hear his experience. Skida, uh, yeah. Nicolas Kicisvili. I've almost got your surname right, Nicolas, yeah? 
that that's 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 fine, man. Everyone gets it wrong, but uh, don't worry about it, man. And, and you, you, you are very close. You are very close, actually. Nicholas, just Nicholas. Nico, okay. Well, if you think that's bad, man, you should try and see me trying to talk to the Serbian guys for the Nuggets because I I can't get a word in. It, I think in Ireland it's just like, yeah, man, who who knows? But uh, that's the great thing about Europe. It's just it's so big and just, there's so so many different cultures as well. So I have to say, first of all, it's a, it's a real honor to have you on just to have a quick conversation about just Thank your you, experience, man. the drafts and stuff, man. And um, like I was, I was saying there now before we actually went live on here. I was um, eleven years old when you were drafted by the Denver Nuggets. So I'm not going to sit here and say I'm an expert on on that night in my life. But obviously, as a guy that so, was drafted, so you, born, so you was born ninety nine and ninety one. Ninety one. I'm still a baby. I want. I want to pray and say that I'm not really like. I mean, you've got more hair than me. So I mean, it's all. Uh... It's okay. Man. It's okay. I got lucky. <laughs> Somehow I got lucky. Usually my age, maybe they don't have a hair, but at, at, at least I didn't get a lot of, lot of years in NBA. At least I got a hair. It's got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, t t tell me this, man. A guy that obviously is drafted uh, fifth overall in 2002, okay? Now, yeah. you know, yeah. being from, you know, being from Georgia and growing up in Europe, uh, what was that? Like, t take, try and take me back to e even before your name was called out. Draft day, like you know, what's what's going through your head at this moment, just before you being uh, drafted? Well, it was a, like uh, it, the way it started my career, man. I was just a kid from nowhere. Nobody know this kid, uh, and I was so talented in the basketball. Like growing up, even in the backyard when we used to play in, in, in where I'm from, like uh, suburbs, they say. I mean, they they saw me. Oh, Nicholas, man, you should play basketball. You are so talented. Every day you're getting better. Like every day you're killing us on the court. Go and try to kill the other guys in a professional way. I mean, come on. I was like, man, I, I didn't even know that much about basketball. Uh, and I remember it was uh, it was Olympics '92. I was still late. I started basketball '94, '95. Barcelona. Oh uh, yes, yes. So like. I was not really interested in the basketball, so you know, people talk to, to talk to me about you know you should be playing basketball, you know, try to watch the Olympic games and and, and somehow like my love about this game got bigger and bigger, and I started basketball. Nobody know know me like first two years, but after the first two years, boom, I exploded, man! Like everything I was absorbing, absorbing very fast. So after two years, I was in the national team. After three years, I, I signed a contract with Europe. After four, like, after the three years, my fourth year of starting basketball, I signed a big deal with the Benetton, United Colors of Benetton. If you remember, we played Euroleague. We went to finals. We went to finals, final four in the Euroleague. We won the championship in Italy. We won the cup in Italy, man. And in the short time, you know. I was doing okay for my career, like for 16, 17 years old kid. And I was in the right places, man. I was in the right places. Very unexperienced, unexperienced guy. Very talented, but unexperienced guy. I was not still developed, man. You know, some guys, they develop early. They look like mature. They look like men. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you mm -hmm. LeBron James, it looks the same right now. You, there is no difference. But I was, I was a kid, like... Uh, if you if you look at me when I was like 16, 17, even 18 when I got to the league, I looked like 12 years old. Like when I'm watching the videos right now, I cannot believe I was in the league 18, 19 years old. But I uh, I could not believe. <laughs> so I mean that's how we started, man. There, there was a it was a great ride, I would say. It was great experience, man. My career uh, for me was unbelievable. Then uh, all of a sudden they called me that I was drafted. I didn't even know what was draft. I, I didn't. We didn't have a lot of news, man. I didn't have a computer back then. Of course, because it's so long ago now, and it's completely yeah, different I mean, now. I think, yes, I mean it was like 2000 still. Some people had, in, and I was a kid. I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't need internet. I didn't need computer. I just needed ball and the basketball. I mean the basket. That's it, man. So I wasn't paying paying attention about the the what is draft. I know NBA. I used to watch a lot, you know, games later later on. But 
And somehow my one of the reporters called me from uh, from the Georgia. I was in Italy, and they say, "Nicholas, congratulations! You are you are getting drafted. You are on the draft." <laughs> I'm like, "Excuse me, what is draft?" <laughs> so they next they they explain to me, you know, how it works, and then um, they explain to me I might be number five, number seven, number eight, and I'm I'm like, I see all these guys. I be, I see all these guys like after me or before me. I'm like. Are you serious, man? Are you, you put me in, uh, I mean, I was, you know, I, I was never ambitious guy. I had, you know, when I was on the court, I tried to compete very good and everything, but I was in a, you know, I knew my level and I just, even if I was better than that, I just, I don't, I didn't like to cross the lines, you know? I didn't like to talk about myself too much. And so I was like, and some people was talking about like Yao Ming should not be number one pick. Nicolo should be, you know, the comment I was reading. I'm like, wow. So I got dropped, man. And I listen, man. I'm, when the scouts came in Italy and they watched me, I was killing it, man. I really did well. Uh, that's what they, they, how we say in English, they, they catch the eye. They, 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 oh yeah, a, you, 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 you catch their eye, you, you stand yeah. out, I guess. Yeah, so. Yes, I mean, because I was doing good on the practice and even D'Antoni used to be my coach and he knew when to put me on the court. Like, you know, if the game is on the line, he, you know, he was like, he was not risking, but if the if we were up by 10 or by by 11 or 15, they, he, they, he calls my name, I substitute, I go in. And in 15 minutes, man, I used to have 15, 20 points. In 10 minutes, I used to have 15. I, 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 somehow, man, that was a great year for me. Everything was happening for me. Everything was happening quick and quick and quick. NBA happened very quick for me. And all of a sudden, I go there. And I don't have too much experience. We tried to grow there. But back then, it was different, man. Now, they know how to take care, take care of, about players they kind of developed this thing, you know. Back then, it was on your own. Like, you are in a big jungle and you have to survive. But now, now I see the, it's, it's, a, it's a, they're doing different job and I think it's great for European kids now because uh, uh, you, can, you, you can see that less likely you, you see, like, Europeans to be busted. You have less chance now because they really, they really take them in the family and they really take care of them you know what i'm saying back then it was different man it was a it was a monsters league man you remember man i had to go up and guard shaquille o'neal uh, i had to go guard Carmelo, and because i was so skinny and i was because i was not ready then they put me on kobe and they put me on michael jordan or they put me on tracy Mag i was lost man <laughs> i'm like man <laughs> So two meters fifteen guy, I, I was playing like they, they they were confused too where to put him, you know, like because uh, skill wise I was good, but uh, mature wise and uh, physically I was not there, bro. I was not there. Yeah, the like I think as well, like the and you you've got, you've really hit the nail on the head. The the difference now between when somebody's drafted, especially from Europe, and then they come into the league, and then even the development that they have, and there's almost that. There's almost that expectation yet. Yeah, let's let let's let them sit out. Let's let them develop. Whereas I think you came in to Denver and you played a lot of games that first season. I, I, I'm, am I right in saying you played a lot? Yeah. Man, you played like 80 first, games or something. First, yes, first year they really tried to. They knew they knew I was a kid and they knew the only way to survive me is to play, develop me, give me some experience, some confidence. Uh, and we had a year. Don't forget that we was doing we we was not doing good. I mean, we were one of the last teams, so what to lose? And uh, yeah. because, be, because they saw we was going to be a last, we tried to get a big pick. So we was trying to aim maybe LeBron or Darko. We, did, we didn't need Darko because they got me, and and they was aiming Carmelo and Johnny. So let, let, him, let, let him develop. Let's see where he goes from this. Uh, you know, I had up, up, man, it was rough for me, man. I had very rough way. I had ups and downs. Uh, some games I had good, but expectation, man, expectation was so not real for me. The expectation was like, uh, sometimes, uh, even when I used to score 15, 10 points, like it was nothing for me. Like 
it was not enough because they draft me as a next Dirk Nowitzki. You know, they draft me as it might be like Kevin Garnett, or mm -hmm. he he also has the skills like a go, like a mix with a, uh, like physically athleticism and everything. He he could be somewhere like it's unbelievable. I'm gonna say, but it's it, it's even you can't even Google it. He can be uh, like mix Kobe Bryant and Kevin Kevin Garnett. Now, I was listening to this like this is not true, and when you hear these kind of things. You believe it. I really wanted to be like them, but it's impossible, man. It takes time. It takes years and years. And when I was not uh, doing that on the court, man, it mentally, man, confused me a little bit. Confused me. Yeah. Yes. I sorry. I, there's there's a bit of a level of Wi-Fi. I've been I've been lucky to be in Denver maybe four or five times, and I've been to lose. I've been to Nuggets games and stuff. Coming from Europe, did, did you enjoy the city of Denver when you were there for the three years? You know, did you enjoy the people? I, the fans? I love Denver. Uh, I loved the way the fans supported me there. Even though I was number number five pick, and uh, they were expecting a lot from this, and the decision the team made to to they were still they were still they still got my back. No matter what, they was waiting and waiting. In some day will happen. Uh, but you know, you have to be tough, man. Mental, like when you kid, you, you it, it takes a lot of patience, patience, and passion. You have to stay patient. And uh, you know, when I was drafted number five, and when they tell you you're gonna be a Dirk Nowitzki next, I was like, So, why you don't play me? Why you don't play? next? The first year I played, the second year, because you know, yeah. we got a lot of players on my position, Carmelo. Kenyon Martin, Marcus Camby, Nene Hilario, Chris Anderson. Man, I was lost inside. So they, they used to tell me, wait, 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 wait. And, you know, two years passed and I was on the bench. I was on the bench. And uh, if you check my statistics on the summer league, I'm, I had a, one of the greatest summer leagues. Not just me. Like, I think I'm top two or top three the players who, who who are in the history of summer league who counts summer league summer league doesn't count anyway but you can see that i was i was talented you can see this kid needs work mm -hmm. there is there is something about me but you have to work you have to yes i did a lot of mistakes maybe that uh maybe we i could handle it different way if we did it if we did great job together, me and the team, something will happen. Uh, I'm not saying I would be a great superstar, probably, but I would have, a, I would be great for the team, and I would have a better career. I think the one thing that stands out from your career, you know, for, if, if you even take away the fact that okay, you've played outside of America for a considerable amount of time, you've had such an experience in different leagues around the world, different countries in the world. I mean, when I lived in Spain and I went to. Uh, a Spanish a Spanish basketball game and for me from Ireland I couldn't believe the atmosphere like the Barcelona game and it was like against Real Madrid and stuff you, you've had a great career in the sense you've been around the world you've seen so many places and you've had such a good experience what yeah. um you know d does your time in the NBA stand out or, or was there somewhere else that maybe stood out for you look uh uh I always wanted to leave NBA and come back to Europe and play in Europe because uh, the things will, because the things didn't go right for me, and I got bored. I got bored because um, money didn't really make sense for me when I was there. The, because I was young and I was very passionate to this game, I said I just, I just don't want to play. I just don't want to be in the NBA to be in NBA. Let me go. Let me develop myself. Let me get ready for this, and maybe come back later. But I got so comfortable when I left. Like you say, the atmosphere is so good in Spain, mm. Italy, Italy, Spain, Greece, and those countries. You get so comfortable in it, you don't want to go out. So somehow I sucked in. Uh, I could maybe try. I tried a few times in, in the league, but uh, I I found more passion in Europe because what I was enjoying, I was doing it. You know, whatever I I, I liked it, I was doing this on the court. Uh, but when I when I finish basketball right now, and when I look back, I always think that you should stick with the NBA because it's one of the best leagues. Mm. If you have a chance that you can stay in the league, 
this is the best place to be the best family uh nba is one of the best family in the whole sports man i think and they know lately especially now they know how to take care of players they know how to take care take care of by, about stuff and everything it's just a different level man not not about money it's just different how they got each other back man yeah i am um... I obviously appreciate your time, and I've got one last question for you. I don't want, and don't don't be worrying if you're not sure, but I presume you are. The Nuggets have came a long way, even in the last five years. They're a very different team to what they were then. They're a very different franchise to what they were when you were there. You've got a young European in Nikola Jokic that is spearheading that team now. How impressed have you been with Nikola? And, and do you really think, because they, they were very close this year to the finals, do you think they can take that next step next year? Me. Listen, they, they were so first of all, Nikola Jokic is one of the one of the best centers I would say I saw lately. Because you know, lately we struggle with the centers. This, this game changed. And it, it's a small game, right? Everybody running, everybody shooting, everybody dribbling. The skill wise changed. And uh he's the type of guy that reminds me back in the day centers, like and few more guys. But he, this guy is amazing. How, how how can you put up with the triple doubles in a game as a big man? It, it, it's it's God given talent. You cannot yeah. just work on this. It, it's a given talent. Man. So they were very close. I'm very big fan of them still. Uh, they were very close. They had this year, and they are getting better every year. This is the scary part of this team. Every year, it's good that they don't change too much players. They don't add new, and they don't let guys go away. They stick around together, and I think this is what helping this team. And I think they're going to be very strong next year, even better than this year. Nico, I um, I, I massively appreciate your time, and and I honestly think, and there there is a joke going, obviously, in Nuggets fans saying that uh, whenever Nikola Jokic was drafted, it was there was like a Taco Bell commercial on TV, and they showed his name under it. It was taking a break. I mean, your story of how you found out that you were going to be drafted is, I think, it's fantastic, and I really want to publicize it to fans here. Thanks so much for coming on, man. It's it's massively appreciated. Thank you.